Yeah. Um, Stephen, talk to us. Stephen yeah. Springer. Yeah, thanks again. This is, uh, again, just a pleasure to be with you on just this prophetic dateline because just even the, the, the strategy and the times and seasons in which we live, I mean, all we need to do is just uh, look around. We know that things are being shaken and stirred for such a time as this. And, you know, I think about even that when, you, when we look back at the, at the book of Genesis in the very beginning, that when there was chaos over the waters, there was this dimension of order that came into place as well. And I, I believe we're in this perfect storm right now where there's awakening that is about to erupt beyond our wildest imagination that in the midst of chaos that we're seeing on the planet, this is the time that I think I really believe that as the saints arise in this place of intercession, in this place of actually understanding that we can actually shift and change the things that we even see. And, and I feel like that's part of it too, that as the prophets begin to prophesy, there are things that are being spoken and released because we've seen things. And what the God is really inviting us, I, I believe, into in this season too, is that we need to continue to keep praying and decreeing and declaring until we see what we've seen. And that's part of it is sometimes you can lose heart when you're like, man, we've been praying, we've been praying, we've been praying. This is not a time to lose heart. This is the time to awaken. And, you know, I think about even, even Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, and there he is before his greatest trial, before the greatest victory, that as he rose from the grave, just, just days before, he's in the garden with his friends, and he's saying, guys, just, just, just come and join me in this. Come and pray. And it was in the midst of, of Gethsemane, which actually means the place of pressing or the, the olive press. I'll tell you what, we are in a pressing season as the body of Christ. And we need to co-labor with Jesus in this and not fall asleep like his friends did. This is not a time to take a nap. This is not a time to fall into the slumber of even where the enemy is trying to cause us to lullaby, lullaby. This is the time where we need to press in with the great intercessor that when there's this pressing going on, we need to see the resurrection on the other side. And I think that's really what we're, what we're being invited into and it's, it's a whole Daniel dimension, Daniel 2.22. It says, you know, he reveals deep mysteries and things uh, that are known that are actually hidden in darkness because he himself actually dwells in light. And I, I feel like the things that are in darkness are about to be exposed because part of it is that us as the sons and the daughters of the kingdom are arising with this grace and this authority. You know, a few weeks ago, I had this... Uh, I had this dream and, and, and uh, it, it really, uh, I, I just want to just want to read it. And, you know, Dutch Sheets had actually used this even as part of a, a strategy actually for prayer and intercession, even around some of the stuff going on in this nation in the elections. But it has to do with even what God's doing in this hour. And uh, I'll just read this dream. Um, and this happened on 1128. I saw Independence Hall and the large clock tower in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, you know, and Philadelphia actually means that the place of brotherly love. And I believe this is the time where we need to love one another. This nation needs to turn back towards this, this idea that we can actually love one another, even if we disagree. But I saw the large clock tower in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and an angel of the Lord came and stood upon it and shouted, when the clock strikes 3 a.m., Valkyrie will fall and will not sink. Now, Valkyrie is kind of interesting, too, because I wasn't real certain, actually, even what Valkyrie was. So I, I got up that day, and I, I looked up Valkyrie, and the first thing that actually came up actually was the Nordis goddess who decided who would fall in the midst of battle. And then I was even rem remembering, actually, that it was the movie, but I hadn't actually seen the movie a, a number of years back with Tom Cruise um, around the whole German thing. And it was, a, it was a structure called Operation Valkyrie that would literally was put in place that if people got online, it was an operation that would be put in place to cause who would fall. But what more than anything, it was about control and it was about governments taking control back. And I feel like even in this season, there's an alignment that God's bringing about that we see in Zerubbabel and Haggai, where uh, 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 Zechariah and, 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 and Haggai about Zerubbabel and Joshua. And see, there's this double anointing that we actually see in Zechariah chapter four, that the, the, the two anointings that are coming about is a kingly anointing and a priestly anointing working together. It's a governmental thing. And not only that, it's, it's the priestly thing. And that's what I believe we're, we're seeing a partnership of both the ecclesia and uh, the, the actual government here on planet earth. There's a joining and a union that has to take place in this time and season. So this idea, the Valkyrie will fall and will not sing if the sons of the kingdom will pray. 
And I feel like that's part of it too, is that we are being invited where there's been such prayerlessness in the church for such a season. And I'm not saying that the church hasn't been praying because honestly, there is more prayer taking place on the planet than there ever has been ever in, in history. And I believe that that's part of it is that God is seeing it. There's a fragrance and there's bowls that are being filled. And those bowls, I'll tell you what, what goes up must come down. And I believe we're going to begin to see quickly seasons of suddenlies where we prayed things for a time and now it's going to be poured out. And I feel like that's part of it too, is that then, well, here's the next phase. Of it. I said, I, uh, I saw fervent prayer taking place in the night and through the night that caused the witchcraft and the curses to bounce back to the sender. And that's some of what even what Sharon was alluding to, that the judgment is coming. It's like those things are going to hit a ceiling and they're going back to the sender because what they're doing is they're trying to stop the move of God. And they're trying to stop actually the presence of the Lord coming forth. And so I'm telling you that the witchcraft and the hexes and vexes that have been going against even our president, President Trump in this season, you know, there's a whole documentary, I guess, that's being made of how they actually stop this whole thing. I'll tell you what, there is something that we're about to see that God is going to do in the midst of the suddenly that's going to shake and rattle and it's going to shake things that can be shaken. Um, and uh, I, ju I just believe that that's part of what we're going on. So th these curses are going back. Uh, then I saw another group of warriors awakened. And see, that's what it is. There's an awakening that's going on. That even as Jesus invited his friends, it's not going to be that same play. We're going to stand with the Lord in this time, in this season, awakened and ready. There was another group of warriors awakened, clothed in battle array, with the host of the angelic leading and surrounding this awakened army. One of the angels kept declaring, the commander's judgments are supreme. The commander's judgments are supreme. And I feel like in that is we need to understand that the commander in chief, Jesus Christ himself, his judgments are supreme and they're going to be released. And some of it is, you know what? Sometimes we, we think judgment is, is, is wicked and evil and it's, and it's wrong. I'll tell you what, some of the greatest judgments is that when, when, I, when I pray for people, even who have cancer and I command that curse and that devil of cancer to go, I'll tell you what, judgment has been released and God's judgments are supreme. And we're going to begin to see that even in a fresh way. This, and every time that these angels would say that, it energized the warriors as they joined in with the declaration, the commander's judgments are supreme. And then I saw the scales of justice tipped, and they were perfectly in balance. And see, that's part of what's going on, is there God's justice and judgment when it comes, when his justice and righteousness comes, it brings things into balance. Because if we have justice without righteousness or righteousness without justice, it falls over. But when we have the two, because it's the foundation of his throne, and that's part of it, is we're going back to foundations and the simplicity of who God is. And so in that, I just believe that, you know, God is raising up watchmen, and he's raising up yeah. ones that just literally gaze and focus the, their gaze upon the Lord. And I just want to read just this scripture, actually, from Haggai chapter 2. For thus says the Lord of hosts, once more, it is just for a little while, I will shake the heaven and the earth, the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all nations and they shall come to the desire of all nations. And they will fill this temple again with glory, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, the gold is mine, says the Lord. The glory of this latter temple will be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And this, and, and in this place, I will give peace, says the Lord. And I feel like that's part of it is we're heading into a season where God is about to pour out things. And we just need to be ready. We need to be positioned. And I think that's an invitation for all of us intercessors that this really is a, an Amos 911 moment, the 911, 911. And it's a call to this place where God is raising up the tabernacle of David again, which has fallen down. And part of the, the reality of David's tabernacle, it was a place of intercession. It was a place of the prophetic where, where, where the singers sang these prophetic songs that changed the atmosphere, that even changed outcomes of war. And as they release that sound, I believe it's the same thing that we're being invited into. And even as we've, we've had this topic of Reese Howells, his, his prayers literally changed the outcome of World War II. And I believe us as the intercessors, this amazing, warring group of people that are being awakened, and that's part of it. I had three different visitations from the angel of awakening and even behind the angel of awakening were these trumpeters and there's a trumpet blast that's being released but behind them were, were these amazing 
angels that have these large sickles because all of this is unto the harvest. We are in the greatest outpouring of glory, the greatest season of this glorious awakening that the planet has ever seen. And see, that's why there's such opposition in the spirit. But I'll tell you what, if God's people will pray, if the sons of the kingdom will pray, that noise and that clamor of the enemy will be silenced. And I'll tell you what, there's an amazing tribe that's going to arise and we're going to see the glory. And that's part of it is we just need to get our head above the clouds in this season. Because if we get our head above the clouds, above the noise and the clamor, the sun is always shining. And there's a radiance that he wants to release through this generation. And there's a reformation and a renaissance that's coming, much like the dark ages back in Europe. I'll tell you what, we're coming out of the dark ages. And that's part of what's even being set in motion. And I even feel like even timings and seasons, you know, I saw even just like Chuck Pierce, I saw the end of January back in August that it was going to be really significant. But what I also sense is that some of this turmoil and shakings and shifting that we're going to see, even until Passover, I believe that's going to be a marking moment, even in, in this 2021 year. So get ready, saints. It's time to pray. It's time to press in until we see what we've seen.